हेलो सलाम शलोम नमस्ते सताल अलोहा ओला चाओ पॉन्शर पूना एंड प्रीवियट एंड बबरे इट्स रियली रियली गुड टू बी विथ यू अगैन एंड यू नो वाई यू विल बी डबल हैप्पी दैट यूर ज्वाइनिंग अस टुडे बिकॉज वी हैव नॉट वन बट two amazing guests today on our show and our very first guest today is Naomi Johnny who is a certified life coach author minister teacher and entrepreneur and our second most wonderful guest is Giselle Johnny who is on a mission actually i should say apostle Giselle Johnny who is on a mission to change the world by helping you ignite your purpose i love that so much welcome to you both thank you i'm honored to be here ah okay so you know what we're going to just jump right in and i mean to have each of you tell us more about who you are and what you do and we'll start with naomi so naomi please tell us more it's a pleasure to tell you more about who i am and what i do I am a certified life coach, right? With Apostle Johnny, I I did my life coaching program with her, and so I got my certification in life coaching under Ignition Mode Life Coaching, and it was a real journey for me. You know, it taught me, as she would have said in her slogan, she's on a mission to help people fulfill their purpose, to know who they are, to make a difference. You know. and through that program i was able to channel my own pains you know of my childhood of young adult abuse and stuff and use those pains for purpose to help women self identify with their beauty with self love with their passions with their skills that sort of thing and so i started a business for so i started beauty with a purpose and i was teaching women that regardless of their own scars their own traumas that they are beautiful and that just because they are star doesn't mean that they are with any less you know and so it transitioned into she becomes more beautiful which is a business and ministry tied into one so it's not as about outward beauty now it's about getting the word in you it's about inward beauty because um be getting to know who you are as a person your skills etc etc and i love to write i am an author because i have been penning poems from the age of 5 years old so i love writing and i love helping people express themselves through writing and editing and yeah that basically sums it up there so that's just me i just love helping women even men children you know become more learn who they are and just tap into their skills you know and go beyond yeah. so that's just yeah, basically in a nutshell that's amazing that's amazing and i'm glad that you work with people of all ages to help them love themselves more and figure more of themselves out because i think the younger we can start with that the better it is you know it's like you yeah. grow up and you don't know who you are you don't know what your purpose is and then it just creates all these complications in your life and suffering in your life that you might have been able to avoid if you start yeah. these things learning young so awesome 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 thank and you apostle jazel please tell us more about who you are and what you do all right so i am um, firstly a person who just loves people most of all i think that the thing about me i love people and i love meeting people mm-hmm. and that's people from all walks of life i just love people i realized from very young every time i met someone i just wanted to know what's inside of that person just looking at how unique each person is and i found that from my childhood i just found myself very interested in meeting people finding out the way they think you know why they think the way they think but the other side of that is that from childhood i was born with a defect in my heart and i was ill almost always and i felt like what is the purpose of being on this earth like i'm always sick i'm always in the doctor always at the hospital i couldn't play sport i felt like a misfit i was always clumsy i shied away from anything that had to do with any game anything like that and i still am very awkward motor skills wise but i found when i was very young 
that I love writing. So I started writing, um, just writing like stories about my mom, about myself, just writing. And then I found out like when I was 50 years old that I just had this gift for writing songs. And so I started writing songs and started singing. But I actually started singing at eight because my dad is a writer as well. So I started singing and I found in singing and writing, I was finding like expression. At age 10, I started my first business. You know, we grew up and there was the lack and, and there was this need. And I started the first business and it helped the family to get into entrepreneurship. So growing up, I, at 15, 16, you know, I felt kind of suicidal, still kind of lost. And it wasn't until my 20s when I, this word came to me, don't abort your purpose, put me on a journey to finding out what was my purpose, why do I exist? Mm-hmm. And that led me to write this book, Don't Devote Your Purpose, the song, Don't Devote Your Purpose. And then I just said, I'm going to give my life to helping people find their purpose. So in a nutshell, what I do right now is business. I help to coach men, women, sometimes men come in as well, in terms of what is your purpose and your goals and your mission in life. And secondly, I love working on the, the humanitarian ministry side of things where we help the people in the homeless shelter with food and clothing and that food. Yes. In summer. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And thank you to both of you for sharing uh your journeys uh in getting to where you are. That is so important. I think also it helps our listeners to realize and recognize that, you know, no matter what you've been through in your life, there is a way that we can take that pain or that challenge or the suffering that we have experienced and find some good in it and uh, I think that's actually the hallmark of an amazing change maker so that's uh, I I really appreciate both of you sharing okay okay. so uh, I guess my first question if I go to Naomi and you know Naomi you were talking about how you when you first started working in your business you're sort of teaching women about um, how they're beautiful even with all the scars they might have or any scars they might have and now you've shifted to focusing more on the inner beauty side of things um How like um so for for you uh when when you are talking about beauty and you're talking about you know like um self love um tell me a little bit more about what do you ground um self love in like what's the basis like if, if somebody has scars if somebody is suffering. You know, they have all these challenges in their life. Um, You know, you can really struggle to find the beauty within yourself or the things to love about you. So what for you is the the foundation or the the basis and through which you can find that self-love and beauty in yourself? Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you're getting value out of it. For your information, this episode has been sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back from making the impact and income you desire? Using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom of our most effective change makers, the Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease. Interested? Book a free Happiness 101 exploration call with me, your happiness expert, Samya Bano. Just use my online calendar link in the show notes. Now, back to the show. Well, for me, I am a Christian and I do not 
discriminate against any other religion. I'm just saying for me, this is my, this is what I believe in. And um, I really found love from the word. Some have their Quran, some have their Bible, some have their, you know, everybody has their texts in context. But for me, I found a lot of peace in my word. I found a lot of self-assurance in my word. And I would say that my word caused me to reflect my creator, my God, and see myself differently. So it took a lot of forgiveness of myself for taking blame that wasn't mine and forgiveness for those who wronged me in my childhood and stuff wow. growing up. Releasing that bitterness, releasing that anger, because I was angry, Samaya. I was angry, you know, at the world. But that quiet time, that time that you take to come away from the noise that tells you, you have a right to be mad, you know, and just really spend time in that way that says, you know, you are loved, you are enough, you are blessed, you are strong, you are resilient. That's basically, it's a love letter from God, you know. Mm. And from there, I found strength, I found wholeness, I found healing. And, you know, I found that I could forgive and letting go was the key thing. That was the key thing to identifying with self-beauty because we can all paint on our face and be beautiful. But inner beauty is reflected from inside and it comes out, you know. So that's where I found my love and I found that beauty. And I share that with all my young people. I have a lot of young people, a lot of all kind of people. Mm -hmm. And that's where I come from in context with love and inner beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Yes. You know, these are life lessons, truly, like, uh, you learn through experience. I mean, you can read about these things in a book, but until you have been through the experience of it, sometimes, you know, you, you, uh, even if you know about these things, theoretically, you can take the knowledge for granted. I know I have had that experience also, uh, growing up, where I was, very angry as well because I'm also a survivor of child sexual abuse and you know for many years I didn't even know that that is what it was called what I went through I didn't have the words to to be able to express or know or define what had happened to me but when I learned about it and I figured it out it made me so angry and um, you know the anger just spills out. It, that's the thing that I found out about anger is that you cannot contain it to just just that one context or that's situation true. in your life. It just spilled out into all my relationships, all the different areas of my life. And when you are in that angry place, then it's you. You know, you are also you getting judgmental and hating this and hating that and hating you know everyone <laughs> and with all of that anger, hate, you know bubbling inside of you it's so difficult to tap into or connect with the love inside mm-hmm. of us whether it's for ourselves or anyone else so that is an amazing lesson that you learn and that you're sharing thank you They say experience is the greatest teacher. Mm. And, you know, it's about beautiful inside and out. It's not just about being pretty on the outside, you know? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And and the fact that, you know, uh, it's interesting how there's this connection Mm -hmm. between outward beauty and inner beauty in that the two can really reflect be a reflection of each other but in this modern world it's like really weird because there's so much focus like for example here in America on outward beauty making everything look good Mm -hmm. and if you go just a little beneath the surface there's so much ugliness Right. So around. much cracks. Yeah. Yes. It's like there's no substance. It's superficial. Sorry, sorry to cut you, you know. And for me, it started as a journey, you know, where it was about building up self-esteem and beauty. But it gets deeper than that. You have to dig deeper. You have to go to roots to really be healed, you know, to really become whole. 
to be able to share that love and experience with others, you really have to dig deeper. It's not just about a surface level beauty, you yes, know? Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's where, you know, Apostle uh, Giselle, like for me, your work comes in because I know for me, in my journey to discover my beauty and love myself more, until I found a sense of purpose, uh, it was really difficult to sort of ground myself. Uh, tell me more about about your work with helping people find purpose. What's the challenge that you find a lot of people struggling with that leaves them not able to figure out their purpose or feeling lost in that way? You know, for me, it's about, at the end of the day, finding your why. I remember just recently seeing this gentleman, Simon Snake, I think he's an actor, talking about start with why. But long before that, you know, when you look around creation, why does the tree exist? Why does the ocean exist? Why does every flower have different beauty? A collation is not a rose. Why is everything so unique and different? Why do fishes never come and try living on land? You know, why the bird doesn't try to be a lion? And so everything in nature understands that it was created for a specific purpose. And everything has its own beauty. Everything has its own expression, its own glory. But when you look at man, he seems to be the only confused path. And so that's what made me really get into faith. That's the challenge because without realizing that you were created and you have a creator. And if you were created, then what's the purpose you were created for? Mm. And so everyone cannot have the same purpose because the lion cannot be the eagle. And so even though we're all human beings and we may have different geographic, you know, live in different geographic locations, have different cultures, beliefs, backgrounds, at the end of the day, we all have a heart. We all have a mind. We all have the ability to think. And so transformation comes when we begin to take responsibility. You know, as Naomi was saying, faith is a great asset, I would say to anyone. Having faith is a great asset. Taking responsibility, saying, I am choosing not to be confused, not to be sad, not to be bitter. I'm choosing to go on a journey to find out why. Why do I exist? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yes. You know, it's like interesting, uh, the analogy that you just gave about uh, in nature, how everything in nature has its purpose. And it's like, uh, you know, there's something so interesting about this existence this universe that we exist in where on the one hand you know there is so much diversity and difference but on the other hand again when you dig deeper it's like everything's interconnected and interrelated and the diversity and the difference sort of like somehow when when each each um, being, each thing, each creature, it's playing its part. That's when everything, you know, like like a like a jigsaw puzzle yes. or something, you know. <laughs> and so it's like, where's my place in this jigsaw puzzle? Uh, yeah, yeah. And so there's like almost, um, yeah. It, it, it's an interesting. So how do you how do you uh, because, you know, like when, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like when I, I've seen so many of my, my clients also uh, struggle with this um, searching for their purpose um, because it can feel very complicated, uh, this process. There's so many options, so many choices of what you could do that, you know, like, um, I know in my own experience, I'm like one of those personalities where I have so many interests, so many different things I'm good at. It's like, what is the one thing for me to do <laughs> that is my purpose, that is mine to do? And it just felt so complicated to figure that out. <laughs> um, what would you say, like, how, how would you um, help someone in that situation or guide someone in that situation? 
So to me, I feel you so much. I can agree with you. That for me was one of my biggest challenges. You know, I was like, okay, what's my purpose? Am I a writer? Am I a singer? I'm a business person. I'm a minister. I'm a mom. I'm a student. I'm all these things. But these are just things that I do. But really, who am I? And, you know, I had to ask myself that question and then just go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And it brought me to realizing something that I do with my clients as well. I'm not my pain. I'm not my past. I'm not the victim of the person that did something to me. I'm not the result of bad, you know, things that have happened. I am a person with a mind and with a will. And so when I start asking things that who I am, what I'm not, Help me because you know what I realized for me, when we go through pain, we can say, I don't want to be abused anymore. I don't want to be in lack anymore. I don't want to be sick anymore. I'm tired of this. And we just keep complaining about what we don't want. But when we start asking ourselves, what do you want? So we start with a why. We start with what do you really, really want? What do you want to do about the pain? Who do you want to help? How is this helping others going to heal you as you help others? You know, when we look at faith, Every person is faith. I am a Christian as well. And when we look at Jesus, when we look at Muhammad, when we look at every single person and every belief system, it was about doing good and it was about helping others. And so when we realize I need to be healed, I also need to bring something to the table because I exist to be and to do. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that point, that seems to help people really get that sense. I've seen persons, you know, come from the place of just existing and when they find that what they love and who they can help mm -hmm. and how they can use those unique gifts and skills and talents that they were given that helps people to really find that inner peace and having it yeah yeah and i bet a lot of that also comes down to uh self-love right it's like even right. if you're going through struggles uh, to figure out your why but if you can love yourself <laughs> in the mean going through that whole process makes things so much easier so Naomi uh, it's like for you um, when you work with your clients your people and helping them love themselves for what is the purpose uh, for you in, uh, or that you try to help your 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 people find uh, in in loving themselves? You know, beyond the fact that it just feels so good to love yourself. <laughs> I mean, it definitely does feel good to love yourself, Asamaya. But I would say, you know. Um, loving yourself is not just about pampering yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, that is an aspect of it that is oh, so lovely. You know, I love my foam baths and my scrubs and my, my affirmations and all of that is self-love. But there is also a dimension of love that requires tough love. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to give yourself tough love. And growing up as a young person, now I'm only 27, right? I started my journey young. And because of my beautiful life coach here, I always had a very good sense of direction. Now, I had some details, obviously, but I also kind of knew where I was going. I love to write. I had a kind of, you know, definite purpose. And tough love is, okay, I'm good at this, but that doesn't mean I'm going to slack at it. You know, it means that I have to be consistent. I have to show up for me. I have to be diligent. I have to set times and boundaries for myself. You know, so it's not just about, yes, self-love is good, self-esteem, you know, understanding what your worth, your standards, you know, telling the world, okay, you can go this far, no further, this is my boundary, I will not allow you to walk all over me, but I will be here for you. Even in the dimension of friends, you know, relationship with friends, I have clients that, one specific client of mine, she loves to help people she let's call her monique because i don't want to call her name she loves to help people and monique's one downfall is she can't say no so somebody will say monique i can get your shoes from off your foot monique will say yes no problem and walk bare feet now that's not self-love she may think that's self-love but that's not self-love because that person has a shoe but they're just covetous of her shoe 
which isn't right. So she has to set standards. She has to have boundaries. So love in yourself comes with discipline. I have to wake up. I have to go to work or I have to establish this business or I need to build my faith or I need to exercise that self-love too, you know? So for me, love is just, it's in all dimensions. You know, I have to learn to give more of me to people or I need to learn to give less of me to people. Love works in both ways, you know? That's my lesson on self-love to my clients. Mm. Wow, okay, you just brought up so many interesting points. Um, uh, okay, so, so you know, when you were talking about Monique, the example of Monique who will give the shoes off her own feet and walk barefoot, and then you look at, you know, um, stories of our, our, our prophets, uh, Jesus, et cetera, you know, these great, amazing uh people who are role models or spiritual um, guides and you see them going to these amazing lengths uh, like for example you know it, uh, uh, it, 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 if uh, you know that very common saying about turn the other cheek you know or um uh, uh you know walking that extra mile to help somebody you know things like that you know that we are taught how do you understand those teachings and in relationship to how we take care of ourselves and love ourselves in a healthy way and still you know like uh, be honoring um, these teachings of our faith i would say you know yes definitely give you have to be a giving person a loving person because you know life it happens in a cycle and what you dish out is what will in turn come back to you so yes you have to give i do practice giving to you know homeless people to to children that do have i do practice giving but i would say that you have to have you have to do it in context you know you have to know that there is a line that you you don't overextend yourself to the point that you end up in the hospital. You know, like you don't you don't put yourself in a position where you give every molecule of your being and there is nothing left of you. You understand? Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying don't do extra, don't go extra, but don't kill yourself at the same time. Yes, we are we are working to be like our prophets and working to be like our savior, but we are not going on the cross. Yes. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So yes, do it, but do it in context. You know, do it, but do not do it to the point where yes, there will be suffering, but don't do it to the point where you can't function. You're not able to be a viable vessel to help. You get me? Yeah. Yeah. Apostle, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Apostle Giselle, what's your? Do you have a a, a perspective on this question? I love, I love, I love this question, and I love this question that you ask. You know, it boils down to loving your neighbor as yourself. That's really what it is, because we can love our neighbor, but we can't love someone else more than you love yourself. Mm. And, you know, someone may say, especially Christians, well, Jesus loved us more than himself, so he died. But the thing about love, when you look at the word love, it is so essence, like that word agape. It means to give to you what you need. And so he did that because he thought that's what we needed. We needed to be salvaged. So if I say to Samir, you know, you say to me, give me your coat. I have to be wise. I have to ask the question. Is giving her my coat expressing love? Does she even need a coat? As Naomi was saying, that person may not need a shoe. And so many times what we call love is really people-pleasing. Mm-hmm. What we call love is looking for significance or acceptance. And sometimes all love has to be to say, no, I can't do that, choosing to love ourselves. And so that, that's how I would answer that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, yeah, I take your point and there's so much of, you know, like context, uh, you know, like, for example, when I think about how Jesus acted or how like Prophet Muhammad stories about the Prophet Muhammad, he was like, you know, um, you know so 
so generous, like to the point where, um, you know, he would um, some there. The, for example, there's a story of, of you know, uh, after the the there was a war, they collected a certain amount of booty, and the prophet like gave it all away to the point where he only kept back like a date for himself you know to eat and everything else you know is given away to other people in need but the interesting thing was that the from for the prophet muhammad that date was enough like he didn't need more he didn't want more like for him that was enough and so he gave everything else away to other people who he saw had need. And so it's like, uh, and now I'm remembering the scene from this drama, Indian drama, where they were portraying the life of the Buddha. And there was a scene, a similar, where they, uh, I thought it was like a teaching a similar lesson where they showed the Buddha and he takes like one grain of rice and he eats it. And then he's like, I'm satisfied. This is all that I need. And then he doesn't eat anymore. And he gives it to other people to eat. And like from a outside perspective, you'd be like, oh, that's so extreme. You only ate one grain of rice. How is that possibly enough? He's going to starve. But actually, he wasn't going to starve. He wasn't starving. Uh, for whatever reason, he had um, reached that point where that was all he needed. And he realized and recognized that that was all he needed. And he didn't take more um, because that was a value that he held that, you know, you don't take more than you need. And so, uh, uh, you know, it, maybe it's partly also like for us when we when we look at these models and how generous they were and how far they went maybe it's also for us to recognize that we have to build our own capacity to be able to maybe work our way up to being that generous that giving um like you don't want if you feel deprived going that far then you have gone too far for you uh, cool. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. So, uh, is, is anything coming up for either of you that you would love to speak about at this moment? Naomi, any thoughts? <laughs> um, I have a book launch. I will be launching my book that I have penned for the upcoming year. So I'm excited about that. Um, you can look out for the book of poems. And it's a book that I started penned since I was really young, I would say 13, 15 to this age. So it's an accumulation of all my woes, my pains, my joys, calling out to my God, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm really excited about that. So you can look out for that. And I don't know, Pastor, is there anything that you would like to share that you have coming up? Well, for me, um, I believe that self-love, as we are talking, all of us, you know, I'm listening to us, I'm listening to myself, I'm listening to Samaya, I'm listening to you, Naomi, and self-love is a journey, love is a journey, mm -hmm. happiness is a journey, purpose is a journey. And the thing that makes a lot of people feel so broken is that we want purpose now, but mm -hmm. it's a working out of that daily, it's making choices daily. And maybe now, December 2023, we may be saying it's, it's, not, it's enough. It's, I, I love myself enough. I'm happy. But next year, we may say there's a, there's a higher bar, there's a higher place. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just want to leave with everyone that we must realize that purpose is about just coming to that place. We may never be able to give a grain of, to live on one grain of rice, but we may be able to live on a quarter plate. <laughs> <laughs> and feel happy giving away that 75%. Yes. It's all about bringing value to the lives of others. True happiness and true blessing is being a blessing. 
you know, True. So in that whatever we do, we may we should try to make humanity better and really loving others, letting others know they're appreciated, they're valued. Seek to be that kind of person that helps people overall, you know, to yeah. not to see love, but to know that they are loved. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. That's awesome. You know, you made make me think about uh, one of my very favorite uh, people here in Los Angeles. She's a leader in the Muslim community, in the interfaith community, and she had a podcast for a while. And in her podcast, she would always ask her guests. And I think given what we have been talking about, I will ask you the same question. And she was like, what is um, your favorite way or best way or that you love to fill your cup so I'll ask that of each of you and Naomi if you would maybe go first I love filling my cup with kids I love children Mm. I love 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 children and I love to see children become you know I love to see that spark in their eyes when they just feel loved, like if they were neglected for a long while. And, you know, you just show them. All children need is tender love and care. They don't need to be barked and bowled at. You know, I love to see children happy, healthy, full, eating, joyful. And that's something that I've always done, whether it's the neighbor, whether it's friends, children. They, they're always in my home. They're always in my home. I will cook a big pot of food. I don't, you know it. I just happy to see them happy and that fills my cup till it runs over yeah. you know and I am hoping that in the future I don't need 10 houses um one house is good for me that I could have something of like a home for children you know where I could feed them and help them just identify their talents and have fun and play and just children should be children they should not be forced to be adults. So that fills my cup till it run it over somewhere. That really makes me happy. So that's my thing. Yeah. What I would say mine is twofold. I love filling my cup by singing, listening to music. That just fills me up. But in that place where I'm singing, I have a lot of inspiration, a lot of downloads, and even getting into that secret place of worship and singing, that's where vision and a lot of ideas birth it for me, business, um, things that have birthed products, books, things that have birthed came of that place, even from, from that secret place, um, that's where I fill my cup. And, you know, one of the biggest ways is that I feel that I can continue to fill my cup as well is when I receive just being able out of that overflow to pour into someone else because that brings me the biggest joy ever letting someone else have a portion of that joy in what I've received. Yep, uh-huh. that's for me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so, and you know what? I will ask you both another question because um, and Naomi, actually you brought this up as a challenge that we can face in our journeys of self-love, but also I know that this is a challenge that we face when we uh, are working on living our lives of purpose, finding our purpose, living our purpose. And that is a challenge of distraction and going off the off the straight path, as it were. It's like we know what our purpose <laughs> is. We know what we need to do to love ourselves more and better and, and to live our purpose more and better. But we get distracted. <laughs> And um, it's just, um, it's like a huge challenge in our lives. So Naomi, your number one advice on how can we not get distracted? How can we stay more focused? And the same for you, Apostle and Giselle, but Naomi first. Um, I would say that to relieve yourself of your distractions, I would say set clear goals. Mm. Clear, clear, clear goals. That's something that I practice daily. You can set mediocre goals, you know, in t- not mediocre, but short-term goals in, in terms of day-to-day. Okay, I need to start exercising more. I need to spend more time in my word or meditating. I need, you know, I need to start giving more. 
or anything like that. That's short-term goals. I need to do this at the bank. I need to do this at the office. I need to help the orphanage. But then there are long-term goals where, okay, I need to get to this place. I need to go higher, you know? So, or I need to attain this to help do this, you know, to do something bigger, bigger picture than just me, you know? Or I need to travel to be able to go and do missions and all these things. So for me, what really gives me the dedication and the discipline, as a person would say, is yes, find your why, but also set clear goals. Now, you don't have to be like in the army, and <laughs> but you have to have an idea. Okay, this is where I'm at, and this is where I need to be, and exercise that self-discipline to get there. So that's what I would say. That helps me to avoid being distracted or taking too many detours. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, that's really, I really want to put that now your way. For me, I would say it's writing that vision and making it very, very plain. So when that vision is on the wall and you're seeing, this is my overall plan. This is the blueprint. This is the vision. This is the goal. This is the thing that I am here to do and I must leave this mark. Because the word man actually means to make a mark. And so this is the mark that I'm going to leave on the earth. This is my why here. And so because of this, this is what January, February, March looks like. This is what Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday looks like. And then you realize that life starts having this pattern where, you know, Monday is my this day, Wednesday is my day that I'm fasting, Friday is my, and that helps. And so when you put that in, you can always press that button and say, I'll call you back. Or you can go on the phone and turn off those notifications that, because you don't want to look at what, what's up before 10 a.m. So it's mm-hmm. these little things. When you set these big goals, as she rightly said, have that vision on the wall. Every day, you know that this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm not doing. I'll always be willing to be flexible because life happens. But overall, <laughs> get back on track as soon as possible. Yep. Like GPS, getting off track, but you find that place to get me right back on track and stay focused. Yeah. Word. <laughs> Word. <laughs> yeah. And if there's life, one... knows how, life knows how to get you out of balance and keep pulling you every direction. So we've got to get to right. say, you know what? I've got to get back on course. Yep. <laughs> that is yeah. so true. That is so true. And I think one of the most loving lessons uh, that we learn from our faith is that, you know, God in his mercy and love is always open to us coming back. It's like no matter yeah. how long a detour you've taken, how big the detour was you can always come back and there's always you know that loving presence waiting for you to come back so uh thank you so <laughs> much to both of you for sharing your love and your wisdom yeah. and man uh, we could definitely keep talking lots <laughs> longer but you know what i i will wrap start to wrap up for today and I would love to have you both come back and maybe even just do uh, one episode focusing on each of you because each of you has such amazing wisdom to share that, you know, I would love to dig deeper in with you. But um, until uh, we connect next time, uh, you know, I will just remind our audience, our listeners, to please check the show notes because we will drop Naomi's and Apostle Giselle's links in there so you can connect with them and get more help and support whenever you're ready for it. And until next time, I just wish you lots and lots of peace and joy. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank lots you. Of love and everyone likewise. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 Enjoyed it totally. <laughs>